Ukraine has announced a new long-range drone rocket capable of reaching deep into Russia. Elon Musk has been implicated in discrediting ties with the sons of Russian oligarchs. Moscow faces a potential electricity shortage due to sanctions. And I will also tell you in the end of my video why we named our new weapon Polonisia. I'm Maria Druska, and today I will bring you the latest news from recent days. But first, you might want to subscribe to my channel because you will like the video anyway, but this way you won't forget to subscribe also because your likes and subscriptions help Ukrainian content reach more people. So thank you in advance. Zelensky showcased a new Ukrainian rocket capable of striking deep into Russia. With it, Ukraine aims to circumvent the restrictions of Western countries. President Volodymyr Zelensky discussed the completion of the first Ukrainian hybrid long-range rocket drone Padanitsa, which took one and a half years to develop. The strike range of this rocket includes over 20 Russian military airfields, uh, such as Tambov, Sochi, Pskov, Engels, and other cities. In two and a half years of full-scale war, Russia has launched about 10,000 missiles of various types and more than 33,000 cops on Ukraine, stopping attacks on our cities possible by striking and the carriers of weaponry, Russian planes at military airfield, Zelensky wrote. He stated that August 24 saw the first combat use of this rocket drone, though Ukrainian president did not specify which particular target was hit. Almost information, all of the information uh, is classified, and it is known that Palanitsa is launched from a ground platform and has a turbojet engine. The cost of this drone missile is much more lower than its counterparts. Well, the US and other NATO countries currently prohibit the use of their long-range missiles for strikes on Russian territory. This is why Ukraine is developing its own long-range weaponry. Zelensky previously stated this many times. Of course, it's not Eticoms or Storm Shadow, and we definitely need our allies to lift restrictions on Ukraine's use of long-range weaponry, because it could really bring us closer to our common victory. In the situation with Kursk, we have already seen how Putin's mythical red lines are erased. So calling this another escalation is at least strange, because in my opinion, the first foreign state's incursion into Russian territory since World War II already shows that some red lines and so-called Russian air defense uh, from that region have disappeared, uh, maybe like red lines. Before I continue, I want to thank all of you who send coffees on Buy Me A Coffee and become Patreons to this channel. Please do so if you want more of these videos on the channel and you can also help this channel by subscribing to it and like this video. It is very helpful for Ukrainian content to be seen by more people. And I suggest you also subscribe to my Twitter page, where I post regular updates about the situation in Ukraine, and to my Instagram, where I show the daily life in Ukraine. As the US presidential race draws closer to its conclusion, passions are heating up in American politics, writes the publication Polit Navigator. The Washington Post. Uh, has released a report sharply attacking one of Donald Trump's VIP sympathizers, Elon Musk. The essence of the investigation revealed in the newspaper is the accusation of Musk in uh, division and indiscriminate financial ties. It seems that some very dubious individuals helped Elon Musk buy Twitter, the publication 
nodes. Such figures are named as Raper um, Combs, Oracle founder Larry Allison, Saudi prince even, well, the latter appears three times in the list as a personality and as a representative of two investment companies, as well as a number of well-known American Trump's supporters. According to the document, one of the 100 largest investors is the venture fund A2VC. The publication reviewed the document from the Northern District of California District Court, which states that the sons of Russian oligarchs Petr Avel and Vadim Moskovich work at this company. Jack Moskovich, Moskovich, who had U.S. residency since 2024, joined the fund in 2018. Moskovich, father Vadim, is a Russian agriculture oligarch. He founded one of Russia's largest agro companies, Rus Agro. From 2006 to 2014, Moskovich Sr. was a member of the upper chamber of the Russian parliament, the Federation Council. Denis Avel, the son of Russian oligarch and president of Alpha Group, Petr Avel, according to Forbes, has been working in the fund since 2022, after his father started being listed on Western country sanctions list. In response to this leak, 8VC founder Joel Lonsdale complained that leftist media attacked him and his fund allegedly because they support because he supports Trump in the upcoming elections. He said, I hate Putin and I fought to help destroy terrorists, save billions of US investment dollars and make us more competent at deterring our adversaries. But we also do important work in other areas and I disagree that it's a good strategy for us to isolate the most intelligent and wealthy Russians he wrote. Guys, what do you think about this, especially my American uh, viewers? Could it be that there is a Russian deal here too and that the Russians did it specifically to control Twitter and Musk and influence him to promote Russian narratives? The capital of Russian Moscow may face an electricity shortage in the coming years, according to the Moscow Times report on the general scheme of Russian energy development until 20. 42. According to the scheme prepared by the system operator, the unified dispatcher of Russia's energy systems, by 2030 the capital is threatened with a shortage of 1.6 gigawatts of power and by 2042 4.2 gigawatts. The system operator first warned of upcoming problems with supplying the Russian capital region last year, citing difficulties with servicing foreign equipment. The issue concerns gas turbine for thermal power plants, which were left without spare parts and repairs following the tightness of Western sanctions in June 2023. Especially General Electric and Siemens have refused to service the turbines. According to the system operator's estimates, foreign turbines provided about 9% of the capacities of the Russian energy system to cover the gap in supplying Moscow with electricity it is necessary to build a new gas station on steam turbine blocks with a total capacity of 1 gigawatt the general scheme states additionally two DC power lines from the Kursk and Novovoronezh nuclear power plants with a capacity of at least 1.5 gigawatts each need to be extended. According to the system operator's materials, the construction cost is estimated at about 200-350 billion rubles. Well, uh, Ukrainian wrong sanctions are also maximally affected in the Russia. For example, another oil depot in the Rostov region has been burning for eight days and the fire cannot be extinguished. I have videos on my Twitter. Come and watch it there. Palanitsa is a round traditional bread with a horizontal incision made on the side. 
in ancient times, Palanitsa symbolized the sun, happiness, and prosperity. Across Christianity, as with bread in general, Palanitsa also represents the happiness and well-being of the Lord. Traditionally, the bread is not cut with a knife, but rather torn by hand. The pronunciation of Palanitsa is difficult for foreigners, particularly Russians, to pronounce. After several Russians pronounced Palanitsa as strawberry Polunitsa, it became an increasingly popular meme across Ukraine and diasporas worldwide. Sometimes there were cases at the front lines where Ukrainian soldiers, to prove that they are not Russians, where uh, when it's dark, they were screaming the word Palanitsa because it is indeed very hard to find a Russian who can pronounce this word correctly. So basically, this is a perfect name for the long-range weapon that hopefully the Russians will be not only difficult to pronounce, but also to destroy. What about you guys? Let me know in the comments if you manage to pronounce Palyanitsa. That's it for today, and I want to thank all of you for supporting Ukraine, watching Ukrainian content. Please like this video, and if you really liked it, you uh, can support the channel's development on Patreon or Buy Me a Coffee. See you soon, and Slava Ukraine!